Montrealers became so fed up with rampaging gunmen robbing banks and trucks in the late 1960s that police set up a special squad to shoot armed robbers dead. An elite squad of Montreal police marksmen routinely solved crimes by peering down their well-oiled semi-automatic 30 caliber M1 rifles, taking steady aim at villains and then putting bloody holes into them. Hold up squad duo Detective Sergeant Eugene Nivorchuk and Detective Sergeant Maurice Bill Brosseau boasted of shooting 18 suspects, killing five over 18 months from 1970. They and two other squad members purportedly apprehended 101 hold up and murder suspects at the scenes of crimes during a similar time span, many of whom were transported directly to hospitals or morgues. I've got no choice but to shoot the guy if he ignores our command to give up, Brasso told the Montreal Star in 1972. But sometimes the next day pity sets in and I get the urge to cry. I've never wasted a bullet and I've never hurt an innocent bystander. I've never shot unless I had to. Brasso said that he killed seven criminals in total. Ivorchuk expressed less regret. It's not pleasant to shoot down another human being, but a lot of these guys don't give us any choice. We give them more of a chance than they'd give us if we dropped our guard. It's us or them, he said. On 29 December 1970, Brasseau and Ivorchuk rushed to a bank of Montreal near the Côte de Neige Plaza only to have their police cruiser riddled with bullets, many narrowly missing them after piercing their windshield. The fearless duo leaped from the car and shot three of the four bandits, killing Claude Lefebvre, 24, who was disguised as a woman. The cop duo also shot and injured bandits Lorenzo Hubert and Royal Favron. About 300 bullets were fired in the exchange. The bastards came out of the bank firing. One of the bullets hit the car only inches away from me. It would have hit me, but I moved just a fraction of a section before it hit, said Ivorchuk. The partners, who both started as $23 per week Montreal constables in the early 1940s, practiced their aim at a police shooting range on weekends. Neither sported bulletproof vests, as they considered them too flimsy to offer sufficient protection. The duo killed two bandits outside the IGA grocery store at 1425 Dorchester East on 7 January 1971. They also left a third one badly injured. Six months later, Bill and Chuck staked out the Frenette Pharmacy at 2480 Beaubien East, watching out for a pair of thieves suspected in over a dozen recent robberies. The duo emerged with $100 and the pair ordered them to surrender. Bandit Serge Leboeuf, 21, whose father was a cop, took aim, but they shot him dead. On 23 July 1972, the team shot Brian Beaumont dead at the scene of a robbery at Household Finance at 6830 Côte de Neige. A pair of his accomplices were injured. Then on 7 September, Bill and Chuck gunned down Richard Favron, 27, outside the CIBC bank at 5 50 Sherbrooke West. As 10 other armed cops stood outside waiting for the pair to emerge after stealing $6,000 from the bank. They also shot his accomplice, Paul Beaupre, 32, three times in the legs. And while the duo blazed their trail of glory, Detective Sergeant Auguste Lompre, who had partnered with Brousseau until 1966, outlasted both as he remained the undisputed king of the hold-up squad, serving on the force from 1957 until his retirement in 1977. Longpre's press clippings, which he curated lovingly in a scrapbook at home, was jammed with articles about his feats. One described his arrest of Jacques Diamond, 19, at his home on Jeanne d'Arc Street on a November morning in 1964. Diamond, still lying in bed, aimed his gun at the officers, but Longpre and two others leaped on him from all directions and cuffed him. Lompre was at the center of a massive shootout on 2 March 1974 after Martin Beaulieu, 43, was found shot dead in a rooming house at 2102 St. André. Police came to question his neighbor, Maurice Rayot, 28, who opened fire on them through the door with his 22 semi-automatic. In March 1973, Lompre led a room-to-room -room search at the apartment tower at 3475 St. Urban after André Desbiens, 30, fired shots at a passing police cruiser from the building. They arrested the armed shooter. Lompre and other cops shot back with their 38s. In all, about 100 shots were fired, but nobody was hit and police got their man. Lompre, whose nickname was Tikkun, or Village Idiot, lost an earlobe to a bullet and had a father who served as Montreal's longest ever serving cop. Lompre and the Montreal holdup guys weren't limited to the island, as they were often called to other municipalities to help out. On 3 September 1971, Lompre and other cops shot and killed Gilles Labelle, 23, and Gilles Louis 24, both of Montreal, as they robbed a bank 
bank in saint basil le grand the town's first ever bank holdup. L'Empre took part in about 100 shootouts over 31 years. The squad's violent pushback helped lower Montreal's bank holdup total from 224 in 1970 to 163 in 1971 as criminals turned to less lethal crimes. On 15 March 1974, police engaged in a shootout with Boston prison escapees who were robbing a bank on Jerry Street and Park Extension, killing bystander Dimitrios Kokora, 74. Nobody could locate the bullet that killed the man, so officers escaped blame. On 15 November 1974, around 200 shots were fired near the Pina Shopping Center as a group of prison escapees from the St. Vincent de Paul prison took aim at a royal bank. Their battle with cops left bandit Jean-Paul Mercier, 28, dead. Bandit Robert Frappier came across a police officer, tripped on the ground. He shot twice at the officer, but his gun was empty. An officer then hobbled Frappier by shooting him in the leg. Prison escape P. Richard Blast, 28, who had killed 13 with bullets and fire at the Gargantua Strip Club on Beaubien, became the highest profile police shooting from that period on 24 January 1975 after officers received a tip that he was hiding at a cottage in Val David in the Laurentians. Police shot him 27 times. Montreal police then shot John Slavy dead on Sherbrooke near Cavendish in May 1976, with many believing that they tossed a gun next to his dead body to claim that he had been armed. Slavy was believed to have killed one police officer years prior and had recently narrowly missed shooting another days earlier. Montreal police slowed down on their Wild West ways in around 1977 when a La Press article referred to the once celebrated team as a death squad, a term later employed by criminologist Jean-Claude Bernheim in a book that criticized the shoot-first practices of that era.